Hey everybody, it's Marcus. I'm back with a special segment after two whole years of having our Tesla solar panels and power wall system. You may remember last month I did a segment on the financials and the total cost of ownership. Well, Tesla has put out some new incentives to sell systems. So I'm gonna go over those because that may change the calculus a little bit. Also, PG&E has come out with a program to get you a power wall for only $900 if you qualify. Stay tuned. A little backstory on our system for those that are new or maybe just joining us for the first time. We have a 12.24 kilowatt array with three power walls that were installed in August of 2021. Now all our panels are east facing on one roof face. Uh, so we actually have two Powerwall Plus units with two inverters. So we have a 7.6 and a 3.8 kilowatt inverter. Uh, for our solar panels, we have Hanwha Q cells. They are 340 watt panels and we have 36 of them mounted. Now it was installed in August of 2021. However, it had some teething issues when it was installed and it wasn't actually operational until September 3rd. Uh, now, that being said, we didn't have permission to operate or PTO until late October. When PG&E and Tesla say it takes 68 weeks to process a interconnection agreement, they're not kidding. It takes a full month and a half to two months. It does take a really long time. Now, I'm not going to go over all the data details for the two year anniversary here in this video. I'm going to save those for a separate video that's coming out later. Right now, I'm going to focus on month to month cost here. Uh, so basically, we're going to look at our loan payments here. Now, what I will tell you is that we don't pay any charges to PG&E other than our connection fee. That's about $11 a month. So that runs about $130 a year. So that's the negative. That's what we pay out. What we get in the first year, we got a true up check, which is your yearly roundup of all your net energy metering credits that they pay you for if you have excess. And we got roughly $290 from that true up check. We also received a virtual power plant check here for $575 in March. That was for the 2022 season. So net year one, we're positive $735. Now, that being said, going into the second year, I expect it to be about a 50% decrease uh, in our income. I think that virtual power plants basically were just utilized at the bare minimum this year, so we're not gonna get back nearly as much as we did then. We also, with Charge On Solar and trying to charge the cars here a bit more, have been utilizing a lot more of our electricity behind the meter, so I expect that our true up check is gonna be a lot less. I'm gonna estimate that basically we're gonna get $400 in checks uh, between the true up and the virtual power plant and with the connection fees of $130 for the year that leads us to about $270 positive. So that's a thousand dollars positive in two months. Now our system runs $400 per month for a payment. We were lucky enough in August or you know July of 2021 to land 0.99% financing and 10% down. So our system cost was about $53,000 before all the incentives, we had a down payment with that 10% of about $5,300 right away. Now I'm here a month later with a little bit of an update here. When we bought our system in August of 2021, we had to do a 10% down payment on it, as you saw. Now Tesla's new incentive is that it's zero down. This kind of changes the math a little, and I'll go over it in a little bit. Two years of payments on top of that, $400 per month, 12 months is $9,600 for two years or $4,800 a year. That's $14,900 out of our pockets in two years. Ouch, that's really expensive, right? But don't forget the federal tax credit. Everything that I'm mentioning is before the federal tax credit. When I installed it in 2021, it was only 26%. But since then, it's actually increased up to 30% with a new bill. Lucky for you if you haven't installed your system yet. And I believe that that 30% credit, uh, it stays there for quite a while. I, th I think it's into 2030 or so. It might even be a little bit beyond that. For our system, our cost was about $53,000 for the system. We got roughly 13, 14 grand in a tax credit. So that really helps out. So let's look at the calculations here. In the past two years, we spent $14,900 out of pocket for loan payments and with uh, the utility costs and $13,780 back in a tax credit plus the $1,000 that the system earned for itself. So the net cost to us actually was only 
$120. We essentially paid an average of about $5 a month for our system so far for two years. Now, hey, it's Mark from the future again. So if we didn't have to make that down payment like you saw in that, that changes the math a little. So our two years of costs would essentially go down by $5,300 to $9,600. That tax credit will still stay the same at about $13,800. We'd have the $1,000 that the system generated in virtual power plant and true up checks. And that basically makes our cost after two years positive $5,180. Essentially, we have another year of payments at $400 a month that aren't coming from our money. That's purely that tax credit. And we didn't put any money down on the system in this situation. So you're playing with the government's money there. That's pretty cool. Now, Tesla also shows you the energy value of your system. And what this is, is it's calculating what your energy or electricity would have cost had you paid PG&E or your utility rates when you used it at that time. For us, that shows with PG&E for the past two years of a savings of $11,787. Let's break that down a little bit further. Basically, that $11,787 is saying that we would have paid PG&E roughly $500 a month for the last two years for the same electricity. Now, keep in mind, we're a two EV family, so electricity is also a fueling cost for us. So we're actually getting rid of you know, those gas station receipts, etc., by bundling that into our solar cost here. So for us, it was actually cheaper with a system payment of $400 a month versus pay, paying PG&E roughly $500 a month you know, and not getting anything from it, it's actually cheaper to go sustainable. So by going solar, we were actually able to put effectively $100 in our pockets every single month. Now, I know you're probably complaining that interest rates aren't anywhere near where they used to be, and that's pretty true. I mean, on the other hand, the federal tax credit has also increased by 4%. So it's offsetting a good chunk of the interest savings. You know, I got 0.99. If you're financing now, I'm sure it's somewhere up in the 6 or 7% range. Now, I actually went on Tesla's website recently because I kept on getting emails from them saying, hey, you know, the uh, cost for systems is going down. You should really check it out. There's some Powerwall discounts going on. So I went ahead and looked at that. And uh, I'm, I'm sure they're also trying to get some Powerwalls out the door before the new Powerwall 3s are produced in earnest. So here we have the uh, order agreement that I signed for our system back in June of 2021. You can see 12.24 kilowatt panels, three Powerwalls. We also paid about $800 extra for an inside the attic conduit run instead of running it over the house. Um, as you can see there, 27,000 was the panels. 23,500 for the power walls are about 7,800 each. That's $53,124. Now, here's me signing into Tesla today and comparing the closest system that I can match up here. Now, this is 12.555 kilowatt, which is a couple hundred extra watts, but it's also this three power walls. Now, the panels are up about $3,000 here to $30,000, and the power walls are at $24,400 each, or $8,133, which is up about $300 each. Minus the um, SREC credit that you get back at the very beginning, that's $53,700 for a system now compared to $53,124 two years ago. Now you can see that the installation costs differ between the 2021 and the 2023 system, but the price difference really only is $600 before all the federal tax credits. Now keep in mind with that tax credit, in 2021 it was 26% for me, in 2023 that's up to 30%. You've also got to keep in mind that interest rates have increased then. We had 0.99, it's probably up in the 6 or 7% range now. So it all kind of balances out. They're really relatively similar in cost. Now, at the beginning of the video, I had referenced a PG&E rebate program to help get you a Powerwall for $900. So we're gonna go over that one right now. Essentially, they have what they call the Permanent Battery Storage Rebate Program, which gives you about $5,000 off a Powerwall or other you know, home battery systems here that they have listed on their website. Now, this goes under wildfire safety improvements, so there are some caveats to getting this rebate and making sure you qualify for it. One, obviously, you have to be an electric customer with PG&E, but you must have experienced eight or more 
enhanced power line safety settings outages since January 1st of 2022. Not 2023, 2022. So if you're in one of those areas where you have a lot of those PSPS shutoffs, um, you know, in case there is high winds or whatever, you definitely should look and see if you qualify. You also will have had to have installed that battery after June 30th of 2023 and make sure it's on that list too. And they're gonna want you enrolled in the Power Saver Rewards program. I'm not sure if that precludes you from being in like a virtual power plant program. We're gonna have to clarify that one in the future but those are the four requirements for it. Now, once you get that $5,000 rebate, if you're looking at a power wall that costs roughly $8,500, you've got to figure that you have the 30% tax credits. So that's roughly $2,500 off the cost of that battery. Now, once you take that $2,500 off at $8,500 and then take the $5,000 rebate, you're looking at $900 to $1,000 for a single power wall. That's an exceptional deal. That's exceptionally cheap. And if you qualify for this, I definitely recommend that you take advantage of it. Now, if you're interested in ordering a system, Tesla has continued the $500 off a solar panel or solar roof system. So all you have to do is put in that $100 refundable deposit, have them come out, do a site assessment, check everything out. Basically, I think you're gonna find that Tesla is the cheapest for solar out there. So I'd say have them come out and look at it. That $100 is completely refundable until you accept the design. And then once you've accepted the design, you only have $100 in it until it passes city inspection. It's really worth it to have Tesla come out and take a look. Now that sums up our two year total cost of ownership video on our Tesla solar panel and power wall system. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. If you think I forgot to calculate something, let me know. Hope you enjoyed, have a good one.